on Kodiak Island, where the Aleutic language and culture were almost lost. I think so many of our people are so messed up, they don't know their roots. But in Old Harbor, it's time to dance again. How the beat of the drum pounds in the hearts of a new generation. Here I am getting choked up again. It's, um, it means a lot because we didn't have that. Also ahead, the Jamai Dance Festival in Bethel. How it brings the young and the young at heart together. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by your local Alaska Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to our program as we explore the frontiers of cultural renewal. For many Native communities, spring is a time to dance again. And for some, it's a tradition that was almost lost. Like in Old Harbor, a town of about 200 on the southeast end of Kodiak Island, where centuries ago, forces of change almost swept the culture away. Today, the tide has turned. Mostly because this little community has worked long and hard. It hasn't been easy to mend the tattered pieces of the Aleutic culture. Stitch right here, right here, right here. But the women of Old Harbor have learned how. All these pieces and parts are all coming together. A patchwork of past and present. What is that magical trick to make the bear hide stand up? So it can be worn as a headdress by the boys in the Old Harbor dance group. A group about to do something that's never been done before. This is a really big deal because it's the first, first Aleutic dance festival for our region and it's happening here in Old Harbor. Every strand starts with one bead. Isn't that awesome? Individual efforts that grow into something much greater than the sum of the parts. It is so uplifting. The Old Harbor Dance Group will wear regalia infused with love and care, not just for them, but also for their ancestors. And I feel it too. It's, it's very emotional for me because we know they're here with us. Here in ways you can touch and feel and see with new eyes. Yes. We had some horrible things happen to us in our past, but look at how strong we are now. Even though time always moves on, the past is never really over. This is a photo of Refuge Rock, an island near Old Harbor, still haunted by stories about how hundreds of Alaska natives died trying to flee Russian invaders in 1784. And then came waves of change and a new faith the people embraced. Yet still a sense of loss that lingers on. Florence Pestrikov says it's hard to find people she can carry on a conversation with in Alutic. There are about 20 speakers today in 2017 that I know of that can speak Alutic fluently. That's on the whole island of Kodiak. Eighty years ago, when Florence was born, everyone around her spoke Alutic, except at school. I didn't do it. I wanted to be a good kid. <laughs> she saw what happened to the kids who did speak Alutic. They would be punished by um, a rubber boot strap being hit on their hands and also the yardstick. 
Today's children do not know the fears that their elders grew by, yet they haven't completely escaped the past. How do we know that historical trauma is real? I believe historical trauma is very real. I've seen it in my own family, in my own life. <laughs> and in just about every Alaska Native family on Kodiak Island, she sees it in the undercurrents of addiction and family violence. Children having their parents, their grandparents have these traumatic events and never being told that story, never being able to understand why their parent or their grandparent acts the way that they do and what kind of things are sort of repeating or playing out in their family life. Boys that were wearing foxes, come and grab your fox over here. Melissa Burns believes dance is how stories and wisdom are passed on. There you go, Michaela. How you feed children with dreams instead of fear. That's why she's worked for years to bring the, the first language. festival here. What is it about having someone learn how to dance from the time that they're the smallest baby all through their life? What is the power of that? It's so important because we're here for those little kids from the time that they're born, you know, because they're gonna be our elders for our community. So what did you feel when you saw that little baby on the floor? Here I am getting choked up again. It's, um, it means a lot because we didn't have that. I didn't have dance. I wish that I had. It would have, I think that it helps you to grow and to develop. And those all important cultural rites of passage. Oh, and that little baby girl, Graceland? That little baby is my great granddaughter that was on the floor today in the practice. Olga Roland is looking forward to seeing four generations of her family take part in this festival. Dance and song, once again a bridge across the generations. It's historical, it's monumental for our, for our culture. Up next, all that preparation but one big problem. The notorious Kodiak Island fog. Would it keep dancers from getting to Old Harbor? When our Frontiers photographer, Will Mater, and I landed in Old Harbor, just ahead of the dancers, the skies were bright with the promise of spring. But the very next day, a snowstorm struck, followed by fog. It's one of those days that this sign on the gate in front of the Old Harbor School was made for. Phyllis Clough does double duty as the school cook and secretary. You have to mentally be ready. Ready for bears and ready for weather that threatens to shut down the island's first regional Aleutic Dance Festival. It's not too bad here, but it's really bad in Kodiak right now. So file that down clean, you can turn this around. At least Drew Michael is here. He came early to teach students how to make masks. A tradition in the Yupik culture which survived the missionaries who discouraged the masks. There's been a lot of change uh, in uh, thinking about this. In the Yupik world, masks were once a form of prayer. Dancers wore them to unmask the spirit world. The Aleutic culture had a similar practice. It's beautiful to see the similarities. I think in this time where we feel that there's a lot of polarities in the world, it's nice to know that there's actually more commonalities than you might think. As the masks come to life, they speak to the students. I didn't really want to hollow it out, but I stuck with it. Just don't give up. Cool, maybe more on the top, yeah. Sweet. The students will get to keep their work, but traditionally, they were burned after a dance festival, a messenger to the spirit world. But there is one mask to be burned at the end of the festival, a mask in which the whole community has been invited to work on. Maybe this represents the story of who we want to be or what kind of change we want. For now, the change everyone wants is the weather. When the weather is bad, you just have to go with the flow. Phyllis, though, has faith it will all work out. But 
On the first night of the festival, the Old Harbor Kids almost made everyone forget that they turned out to be the only dance group on the schedule. The next day didn't look much better, but by early afternoon, the sky cleared and the dancers arrived. Are you excited about the dance festival? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nadia Anderson is from Uzinki. She and her classmates have come to learn because they don't have a dance teacher in their community. Then you put your right hand up and your left hand down. You got to spread your duck wings and you turn all the way around. Okay, so let's try that whole first part again. I all that dancing, and you can work up an appetite. Barbecue seal ribs. From seal ribs to deer meat, plenty of alutic soul food to be found here, enough to feed all of the dancers and everyone else in town. The spark of inspiration for this whole event came from a Yupik dance festival in Bethel nine years ago when the Old Harbor dancers were invited to take part. And although it was a different culture, the Jamai Festival brought them closer to what's at the heart of traditional gatherings, a time not just to dance, but also share. At its heart, this festival has been a way to give back to kids like Nadia who want to dance but may not have as much opportunity to learn. We want people to come and ask for help and for us too to rely on other people to, to share because that's the way it, it used to happen. I mean, we used to get together and share and learn from one another and, and to grow. <laughs> to feel comfortable with going a step further into creating new traditions. The community mask made its final appearance, painted and ready to be set free. To be transformed by fire, but first a chance to attach a ribbon along with a personal prayer. This has been a buildup of a lot of effort and time and people coming together and now we can release that. The mask, like the festival, lives now only in the mind's eye, a reminder that memories are what make us who we are. Well, not all of the dance groups were able to make it in, but enough to help Old Harbor make history. Up next, how dance festivals change lives. That's what they say about Bethel's Jamai Festival. Almost after 30 years, the beat goes on. Jamai. If there is one word to learn in the Yupik language to learn, it's Jamai, which means hello or welcome. And it's also the name of an annual dance festival that began in Bethel in 1989, almost three decades ago. Dancers from all over the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta come to dance and drum to rededicate themselves to preserving Yupik culture. And joining us now to give us an appreciation of this annual gathering, Linda Curta, uh, one of the festival's longtime organizers, and Steve. Blanchette, who is part of the dance group Bamiya. Another great Yupik word to know, and I'll let you explain <laughs> what it means. Well, Bamiya literally means its tail, like a tail of a dog or, a, or like a uh, whale. But in dancing for Yupik, uh, it means the tail end of the dance. So they're asking it to be repeated. So it kind of means encore. And, you know, it's so fun to hear the audience sort of call this out and they keep doing it. It's kind of a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if you're, if you're a dance group, you're doing amazing, they'll be yelling bumio. But we try to like keep one bumio limit per song because we want to get the show, keep going on the road, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, that is a wonderful thing about these dance festivals is they have so many rich traditions. And I thought we could start off by sharing some of the quotes, Linda, that you have collected over the years uh, from, from Native elders, participants. And I think the first one is so appropriate, Andy Palkin from St. Mary's. I met him years ago. He was a very special, special individual from St. Mary's. We dedicated the festival in 2010 to him. And before his passing, he shared, without ritual, without storytelling, without the drum, without dance, subsistence is only food. And that actually quote is at the top of our Chimai history pages and just reminds us what the purpose um, is as we continue the festival each year. I mean, the festival can be appreciated on, on so many, many levels. Absolutely. Um, you know, the festival itself is 20 to 25 dance groups. They come from not just the region, but from the state. Um, Old Harbor, I was thrilled to see them in this piece and that they're dancing. I want to encourage all communities to do that. They came to the festival, as you said, nine years ago. Um, and it's... Um, Yes, over time, we've had many different groups, and national and international. And that weather piece was fascinating because we have had blizzards at the beginning of Chimai. At the end of Chimai, this year, we had a group coming from Canada, and it took them two and a half days to get to Bethel because of the weather. So um, don't ever let the weather stop you. Just the show goes on. Mm -hmm. Well, Stephen, in fact, you were stopped by the weather. You were supposed to be in Old Harbor. <laughs> yeah, I had been going to Old Harbor for years, working with their dance group with Melissa Burns and, uh, and the folks there. So I was really excited to, to be there and help them out and MC for their, for their very first festival. But uh, as I made it as far as Kodiak City, and I was there for three days. So what, what is it about these dance festivals that allows an opportunity for personal growth? Well, I mean, for when you have your first dance, that's kind of, it's a, it's a coming of age kind of, you know, you, you're saying to the community, I'm here, I'm a provider, um, I am a part of the community, I'm part of you. And so it, it really is just a, a step you know, traditionally was a step in into our communities. Linda, one of the things people say a lot is that Jamai changes lives. Do you believe that? Oh, very much so. And building on the idea of first dance, both of our two elementary schools in the kindergarten year, they come to Jamai for their first dance. And the schools have done a wonderful job. The rabbit skin, they kneel on that, they do their first dance, their parents come up and support them with a drink of water, then the parents dance with the children, and then there is gift giving to the elders. It really is that, as you say, Stephen, that connection to culture. And um, I had one young mother say, I, she's Yupik, but she's never danced. And her first dance was with her son, his first dance. Wow. Well, it's changed your life, Steve, and your brother, <laughs> <laughs> and your best friend, Ozzy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> in Bumya. Yeah, back in 1996, when we first started uh, our group uh, performing, it was one of our very first performances. And, and we, it was our way of going in front of our community and asking if this is okay, that we sing our traditional songs in this contemporary manner. And when we were singing our first song, Jaya Kanahua, um, we kind of sang it the traditional way. And when we, uh, in the first verse, we hit a harmony. And when we hit that harmony, the audience just stood up and started clapping in the middle of the song before we were even over. And right then and there, all of it, I mean, the hair stood on, on my back and it was, I knew that what we were doing was right, and we got approval from our elders. I think what people loved about it was the fusion sound that Bamiya introduced. You know, you are also African American. Mm -hmm. Right. Your mother yeah. is Yupik, but this fusion of the two sounds. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it was intriguing. You know, it's like there's you know so much. There's a lot of um, back home, a lot of people that now are not just Yupik. They're of, of different cultures, and and it's a way of just uplifting all the cultures, all sides of you. So I think people really uh, can understand that and we do it 
musically? Well, one of the things we want to share is that your mother, Marie Mead, was mm -hmm. recognized. Jamal, you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about what her award was all about? Yes. Um, we have three categories. We do a dedication to those who've passed and been a part of the dance living treasures, but we also have a special recognition. We call it Chimai Honors. And we've only had a few people. Jim Barker was one of them for his work in photography. But this year, in fact, I've been trying to do it for about three or four <laughs> years and getting bummier at the same time is it was hard. But yes, we recognize Marie Mead for her history of just not just dance, but will travel carrying the culture. Now, it's interesting, you know, we see her dance uh, in, in her turquoise cuspuk, uh, just looking uh, as if she's always done it all her life. But I, I understand she came to dance late in her life. It, it, it was, it was kind of like myself, you know, it came later in life. Um, um, but my mom, when she was in, at UAF going to college, she was, she was you know, kind of scared and alone and in a, in a strange place, but then she heard the drum. She heard this familiar sound and she went towards it and it was a, a Yupik dance group that was dancing and that was her, her introduction into dance and getting into it. Yeah. Well, we have a quote uh, that is among the uh, Jamai favorites uh, and I'll read it quickly here. It's from Marie. It says, in the past, it was a big mistake to stop the dancing. A lot of things died in this process. Restarting the dances is only one thing, but learning the dances, you young people will have weight so that nobody can brush you off the top of this earth. You will be the exciting ones. And, and I think, was she speaking to you? <laughs> Being, you know, but what is it about having to keep these traditions fresh you know, and not always do them exactly the way they were done? Well, we, we definitely want to keep it as close as possible with you know, the intent um, of, of the composer when we're doing someone's songs. But we also have leeway. And that's a good, cool thing about Yupik dancing is, is you can just put your own personality and flair into it. And everybody has their own personality. Like my brother, when he dances, he closes his eyes and he really gets into it. And me, I get all silly and, <laughs> and like, I just I become a goof. And, and, and it was because of my grandmother. She said, if you, if you dance, make sure you make the people smile, make them laugh and make them happy. Well, this is an appropriate time to share a quote from Chuna McIntyre. And he was a, a presenter at, at this year's festival. Yeah, and Chuno is a great teacher for me. Um, I dance for it lifts my spirit. I reach out and touch the hands of my ancestors, and I know that I have come home. Yeah, and to me, when I go to the Jamai Festival, I'm home. You know, that's, that's where I grew up, and that's what I uh, identify as my home, no matter how long I've lived here in Anchorage. When someone asks me, where, where are you from? I say, I'm from Bethel, and, and that, that connection to my home is so strong, and it has never it's never waned or um, it's no, no, no matter how long I've been away or how far I am away, it's, it's, it's home. And Linda, you've moved from Bethel, but you always go back for Jemai. Why is it that you just can't let go of, of working with this festival? That's a great question. <laughs> and I guess it's the same reason as Stephen. When people ask, where's my home? Where's my heart? It is Bethel. And it's my gift back to the region I, my residence is here in Anchorage, but my home and my heart is Bethel. Same for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Linda Curta and Steve Blanchett. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's conversation on culture. The Yupik word for goodbye is biuhua. Literally, hope I'm pronouncing it right, be as you are, continue on. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.